Hello, I'm that James Guy, and today I'm on my way to Bowtie Tech Corp. My 2013 BMW 328i X Drive has a headlight issue, as you've already seen in my previous video. The problem with the headlight is when I turn the car off, my right headlight just stays on for a long time, 10 minutes, and then turns off. Plus, it's a the adaptive part does not work, and I'm getting a warning for the adaptive headlights on the dash. So all of these things, I've given it one crack to try and fix it. That didn't work, uh, but it turns out I have a local BMW mechanic who's phenomenal and we are, we're working on the problem. So I've tried a few things and uh, we're leaving it up to the shop. Uh, luckily I have a local mechanic a BMW guy who's got lots of diagnostic -y type things and we are heading there now but before we get there please like the video hit the subscribe button it helps me out a lot fast forward to the shop here we go oh that's a nice one I should take that one home <laughs> There's a lot of cool stuff in here. All right, Mark, how long you been here in town? We've been here just shy of two years now. Two years, so here's the thing, is I was gonna take my car to Penticton. That's 45 minutes that way. And I'm playing mini golf with my kids and a radio ad comes on that right here in Asuyus, we have bow tie, which you'd never know because there's no signs, no nothing, uh, that, uh, German cars. So here we are. We've kind of started dealing with, well, <laughs> we're <laughs> fairly heavily invested in this, uh, this uh, whole headlight issue, but so let's run through it. First of all, what did we do? I brought you a module, remember? I brought you the little headlight yeah. module because I thought, hey, that's what the internet says is wrong with it. Um, that didn't work. No. But you're getting stepper motor codes, yeah. right? Trouble codes. All, 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 all originally kind of, uh, came from an accident that you, the car was in, correct? Right, so. The light was replaced at that time. Yeah, my wife decked a deer, it got a new light. Yeah. Um, but we had that code, so then we ended up, we tried some pass-through programming. Yeah, that was some programming. That basically just kind of erased the problem, but it didn't actually fix anything, exactly. right? Exactly. So then we, what did we do next? We tried a new, a used headlight. Tried a headlight, module assembly. And it didn't change a single thing. No. So then, now we're down to this over here, which is the FEM, but there's also the FEM, other stuff. The GW body control, light control module. Right. So All the wiring has been back checked and traced and, and uh, as it should be. So this isn't a common problem. So it's not something you could just Google and find that people have been replacing these modules left, right and center. Yeah. So uh, you've got a bit of a unique case here. I mean, I've been yeah, all line, so. I've been all over the forums. Like, of course, that's the way to fix stuff is to go on the forums. Yep. And never once did this come up. No. Yep. But we got this used one from a record, same place as the headlight. Yeah. And it fixed it. Yeah. But won't start the car because yeah. it's a gateway module to allow your uh, security system to unlock, right? So it's been locked. Right. You, can't, you can't just throw a used one into your car. So all the security stuff, all the key coding and all that crap's in Walk there. to a different vehicle, yeah. So anyway. Now we send that away. <laughs> and get the information taken out of your old one, put into that one. But like, you use auto logic, right? We do. With all your stuff. We do. So that's more, that's like the legit kind of OEM-like way of programming and stuff. It is. And you tough. cannot code or write anything in a used FEM. So I found a place on the internet. We're going to try it. We're going to send it out. And I guess that'll be part three. You don't even know there's already that'll been fix it. There's already been a part one. Third time's a charm. That'll fix it. That's what they say. So <laughs> third, third time's a charm. We're going to send this away and we're going to hope for the best. So anyway, yeah. um, Mark has been absolutely awesome, more than gracious, like 
basically all this, his own time and all this stuff to try and get this all sorted out for me. Because it's a new issue, right? Yeah, so it is. This stuff it is. isn't really hitting the aftermarket quite yet. So fairly new car, and this isn't a common problem. So some of this might have stemmed from the accident, and maybe a pinched wire or a shorted wire somewhere along the way. There was some wiring repairs done behind the headlight I saw. So yeah. This, Maybe, you know, we don't uh, really know what could have caused this, but... Um, maybe after all this, my body shop will pay for this whole thing, hey? Maybe. We'll try. Anyway, thank you. Yeah. Truly appreciate it. Yeah. So a little about this FEM repair cloning place. It's down in Oregon. I'm going to try it out. But this whole thing is going to have to be timed right. I have to down the car for a week because what I have to do is I have to send both the donor and the old module down there. And oh, I think one key, you're supposed to send a key and they basically take the whole computer apart. They get to the EEPROM chip, which holds all the programming and they just use like regular old electronics software. So not official BMW, normal anything. And they basically just copy whatever's on that chip and they clone it into the other one, into the donor one. So I'm not gonna have my car for a bit. So I gotta kind of time that correctly so yeah we'll see what will happen but anyway next we'll remove this thing we'll send it down and hopefully this fixes it that'll have to wait for another day um, while I try and plan this and decide when I'm gonna do this so I hope you found this helpful or at least mildly entertaining thanks to Mark at Bowtie for helping me out and um, I will see you next time